I didn't think I'd ever hear myself saying this, but I really don't want to like breakdance. But the reality is, I kind of do. The more I've looked at it, the more videos I see, the more ways I see it being developed, there's a lot to like about it. Now, I'm not getting paid to say any of this. I've got no affiliate links, no sponsorships. I'm making no money out of this whatsoever. I just want to give you my opinion on some of the things that I really do like the way that they've been integrated into this builder. So let's take a look at some of the things I'm talking about. Now, I would recommend taking a look at the actual official Breakdance YouTube channel. I put a link in the description below because there's a lot more detail on the various different things that I'm going to talk about in this video. Check that out you're going to get more detail about how to use the various different functions and things I'm talking about. And as always, I would love to get your opinion on this. Have you tested breakdance for yourself? Are you excited for it? Are you kind of meh? Do you want to avoid it because of what happened with the way it was launched with oxygen and all those kinds of things? Let me know in the comment section below because I would love to know your feedback. Okay, so with those being said, one of the first things I want to talk about that I think is incredibly well integrated. And that is the ability to work with custom mega menus. It's a very easy way of working. So let me just quickly show you how you can do that. This is not a tutorial by any stretch. This is just showing you how to do things. So let's come over into the dashboard. I've got Breakdance installed already. This is the beta version, the latest beta at the time of releasing this, which is the 9th of August, 2022. You can see there's a range of options inside here. For this example, we're gonna create a header template. So let's go into headers. We're gonna say, add a new header. We'll call this global. We can choose where we want to apply this. And as you can see, we've got quite a range of different conditions inside here. So we're going to say for everywhere, but if you wanted to, you can add even more complex conditions. So you can choose things like whether it's an author, search, post type, posts, parents. There's an absolute abundance, including logged in status, registration, lots of different things. For this though, we're just going to say this is going to be everywhere. We'll delete that from there and we're going to keep it really simple. We'll add our header in. And as you can see, this now takes us into the list of headers. Now, this is one of those things that I think once I've said I want to create a header, to me, it makes more sense. You just take me straight into creating the header. But we let that little niggle go aside and we'll say editing breakdowns. This now takes us into the breakdowns editor, at which point we can come over, click on add. We're going to add a section in. Let's expand the actual structure panel on the right hand side. Let's come into our section. We're going to come into our spacing. We'll just pop some padding at the top and bottom. This will kind of compress things up a little bit. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add in a menu. Now there's two kinds of menus that you can create inside Breakdance. There's the menu builder, which is what we're going to take a look at, but there's the WP menu or the WordPress menu that will allow you to choose any WordPress menu that you create. So if you want to work with that standard feature, you can do that. If you want to create your own custom mega menu or just a simple menu using the menu builder, you can use that. So let's go ahead and add that into our design. Let's go ahead and select our section and adjust our alignment on this. So we'll come to our layout, we'll set this to the right and we'll set it to centered. And as you can see, this now pulls in a standard looking menu structure. However, if we take a look at the structure panel on the right hand side, you can see there's a range of different types of menus inside here. Your menu builder gives you menu links, drop downs and all kinds of different things. So if we select the menu builder, you can see on the left hand side, we've got menu custom drop down, menu drop down, menu button and menu link. So we've got various different kinds of standard kind of link, which would take you home. You take a look at products. You can see this is more of a mega menu type layout where we've got multiple different columns inside there. And once you select any of these, you see it opens up the options on the left hand side. So it's incredibly simple. There's no rocket science involved in this. It's really easy. If you want to kind of hold things in place when you're editing, because you might want to edit the styles of your actual drop downs, you can simply come to your menu builder and say, keep menu selected while styling. And that will kind of leave this open as you make changes. And then you can kind of come into your menu drop down, for example, and you can add more things in. So we can say, we want to add another column in. We'll give this a title. And you see, we now have a new column inside there. We can add some links in, drop a URL in, Choose how we want to handle that, add some icons in if we want to. We can choose an icon from our icon library. Choose WordPress, for example, and you can see that now drops that inside there. You can come into advanced and you can adjust various different parameters inside here. So it's really, really easy. Let's just get rid of that completely. You can style all of this. You can come into your style options. You can see you can style your wrapper, your links, your columns. It's very, very easy. You can see use cases is a single column. Come to developers. 
double column coming to about you can see this is a totally custom kind of layout and you can drag and drop any items you want into this custom menu drop down so for example we might want to add something else so let's say we want to add in some text some rich text for example we can simply go ahead drop that inside there you can see that's now added that in we can go ahead edit this do whatever we want we can pull in dynamic data and all this is added into the menu system with drag and drop ease you know it is for want of a better word really really simple to work with and then we can just go ahead and we can say let's go to our section let's add a little bit of a drop shadow to this add our shadow that gives us our heading section we'll save that and we've now created a global header and a custom mega menu in minutes you know that's how easy it is like i say i don't want to like it but this is a really good way of actually integrating mega menus into a builder like this and if you open up the front end of our site, you can see there's our menu. Everything is laid out the way we've just seen it, including our about section with our rich text inside there. It doesn't get much easier than that. Next on the list is we have a loop builder. Now you can see underneath I've got this archives and you can see this is a custom loop. So you can customize this. You can create it any way you want. I found in my testing, I do get some errors when trying to set things up. It does save it, but I get an error when I'm working on it. But let me just quickly show you how this works. If we come back into our dashboard, come into breakdance, you'll see we've got an option for global blocks. We open that up, and inside there you can see there's my post loop design. Let's come in and edit this. Now, if you've ever used any kind of loop builder with tools like Elementor, or if you're using Generate Press, those kinds of tools, you'll be very familiar with this. You kind of create this template layout for each one of your loop items. So if we come back to our example, each one of these is a loop item. So what we're doing inside Breakdance is creating the content, the layout, the structure, and so on for that. So you can see we've got the featured image, which I've set up to be linked. So if I click on that, you can see we're using dynamic data for the featured image. And we can click on any of these. And you see when we hover over, we get the little database icon, which I still don't like. I still think it's a strange kind of way of working because unless you actually hover over and you know there's something there, you don't know the database icon is even going to be there. So I would much rather see that just be in there all the time so we can see dynamic data is available. But that's still going back to my original video, which I'll link in the description below. So once you've kind of created all the different elements, you've dropped in your, uh, your meta information, your title and so on, using the dynamic information. So you can see again, the post title, all those options inside you. If you're coming from Oxygen, this is all going to feel very, very familiar. This is the same kind of way of creating and inserting dynamic data into breakdowns like you would have with oxygen so once we've created the loop we simply go ahead and save this we'll hop back out of here and go back into wordpress and now what we need to do is either create a template or create a page or a post where we want to include this information i've gone ahead and just created an ordinary page so if we come into our pages you can see there's our post loop we'll edit this with breakdance and this is where our loop is actually inserted. So let's pull up our structure panel on the right hand side. Let's just get rid of this completely. What we're going to do is we're going to come into add. We're going to do a search for loop. And you can see there's our post loop builder. So what we need to do is add that to our page. We tell it then what global block we want to use. And this is that template we've just created, that global template I've just shown you. We'll say post loop design, which is the one I've just created. And you see that now pulls that information in. Come into query, for example, we've got a range of options. We can choose to have a text query where you can see we can just manually type in the query we want, referencing the WordPress query. We can come in and create an array if you want to get stuck into having more advanced controls over this using the code. Or you can use custom and have a more visual way of working where we've got this kind of builder that allows us to choose the source, what to include, the amount of posts and so on. You can even add conditions inside you. And again, you've got a range of different kinds of conditions. You can stack these. You can set your order. You can ignore the current post if you're using this to create a uh, sort of associated images or if you're working with WooCommerce, which you can use this on. You can set this up so it'll show related products, those kinds of things. You kind of get the idea. You can also ignore sticky posts. So we'll uncheck that, we'll uncheck that, and we'll just apply this query as standard. But you can, if you want to, come in and choose posts, pages, media. And if you're working with custom post types, creating your own, they're available inside here as well. We'll apply that query. Nothing's really going to change because that's the query that was being used anyway. 
You've got your pagination options and you can choose what kind of pagination you want, load more, numbers and previous and so on. We'll click on previous and next, for example, and you can change the text inside there. Or if you choose something like numbers, you can see show all page numbers. So you can know people to step through all the different pages that are available. You kind of get the idea. If we come into our option for styling things, you can see this is where we can choose the list. We can change this between uh, whether you want to use a list, a grid or a slider. So at the moment, this is using the list layout. And as you can see, this just shows us a list of the posts. However, if we change this over to grid, you can see nothing actually updates inside you. I did get an error message the last time I tried this, but it's a beta version, so I expect there to be problems with this. And if you come into slider, then you should have the option to create a slider. But as you can see, it doesn't load it in correctly for whatever reason. But it does work on the front end, and hopefully this is something that will be updated relatively soon. So I'm going to put that back to grid. Let's change this over to be something like three. You can see one item at you can set things up based upon the different kind of responsive modes you want to work with. You can adjust the space in between. You can commit your posts. You can adjust the backgrounds of these, your container. So you can style the various different aspects of this. We'll hit save on there. So that's another one of the features, the loop builder that works with custom post types, the inbuilt options inside WordPress itself with WooCommerce. So this, once it's kind of fully featured and fleshed out and working the way it should do, gives you a ton of options, which you can create your own custom layouts and all those kinds of things, icon lists and all manner of different things. Coming back into the dashboard, you've also got pop-ups. So if you want a pop-up builder, you have that option inside here as well. So you can say add a pop-up. You can create what kind of pop-up you want. You give it a name, the location. So you can see, again, we've got similar kind of options that we've seen with most of the other locations used for templates and things. Let's just say we'll set that everywhere. You can add your conditions then. So you can set up and stack conditions. So you can see if you want to apply specific conditions. So if someone has to be logged out, for example, so you don't annoy your logged in users. You have options like that inside you. You know, use a logged in status. Use the roles. Don't want to show it to your admins, but only want to show it to sort of customers or something. You can set all those options up inside you. And as always, you can stack those as well with the conditions. You can choose your triggers. So you can see we've got page load, scroll, pair scroll up, user inactivity, mouse moves to exit, or a click. So you can integrate this into various different things. If you wanted to have a pop-up when someone clicks on a contact me button, for example, you can set that up, have a pop-up appear, and so on. Let's say page load, and you can say, when do you want to show it? We'll say after three seconds. I say limit how often, so we can see exactly how many times the user will see. So per page load, per session, forever. We'll uncheck that. I say, do not show this pop-up if any other pop-up pop -up is already shown. So you don't want to stack pop-ups on top of each other. Once you've done that, we say add pop-up, add our pop-up. And you see there's our pop-up created. And again, we've got that same kind of way of working inside breakdowns. So when you create a template or a pop-up or a header or a footer or so on, kind of brings you to this list, which shows you all the different parameters. Again, like I say, I would like to see this. It just takes you straight in to start working on creating something. Just Makes more sense. It's one less click. But let's edit with Breakdance. And now you can go ahead and use the Breakdance Builder to create any kind of pop-up you want. So you can see we can choose the pop-up option. We can then start to add the various different things. So we say we want to put a heading inside there. We want to put an image inside there. A video, whatever you kind of want to do, we'll choose a picture. This will do. Click on Choose. And we'll save that. So we've now created our custom pop-up, which we can then go ahead and test. So let's refresh the page, and there's our pop-up. You can see, super, super easy to deal with. And as always, you can come back in, you can make changes to this, you can adjust the pop-up itself. Let's open up the actual options. So there's your pop-up. You can disable your overlay, allow a scroll, show the close button after a certain period of time. You can style it, you can choose what overlay. You can come into advanced options. You can hide this based upon various different breakpoints. You know, there's a ton of different options inside you for dealing with this side of things. Next on the agenda is the design library. Now, you may be thinking this is just a typical design library, and I can't really cover too much in this because it would re require a lot of setting up, but I would recommend checking out the video that Lewis actually released a couple of days ago about this because I really do like the way this has been integrated. So first of all, let's take a look at the way you'd expect it to work. If you come over and click on Add, you can see we've got Elements. But we've also got Library. If we click on Library, this is going to open up the library of pre-designed layouts. Now, again, you can see this is not necessarily the nicest looking layout. But if we go into Notifications, for example, you can see this will actually show you what they physically look like. 
it'd be nice to sort of have something on the home page the, the first, sort of first page you see there that allows you to get an idea of what kind of content you're looking at but let's say you wanted something like a section let's take a look at this video background for example or this animated gradient what we can do is we can click on add to page and there you go that adds it to the page with all the effects in place and then you can come in you can open up the options for the structure and you can see we can control the heading the section the text so you can come in you can adjust anything you want inside your the background the image all those kinds of things so really really simple way of working now that's as you would expect it so there's nothing too exciting about that but let me just show you one other thing that I think is pretty cool. Let's click on the library one more time. This time we're going to change where it says Element Demos Beta, which is the built-in beta kind of design layouts, which apparently there will be a lot more added over time. Let's click and you can see it says this website. So once we do that, that will now show us on the left-hand side all the different parts of our website that we can actually insert into the page we're currently working on. So for example, if we take a look at design library, that's the page I've just created and I've inserted one of the standard library layers. You can see the animated gradient header. But the post loop, which is the page we just took a look at when we were looking at the post loop, that's available to me as well. So you could see if I want to, I can go ahead, I can add this into the page. And I've now added in my post loop from another page on this site. Saves you having to go through the whole process of copying from one page to another you can just literally come into your library and grab anything you want that's listed inside you. I mean, you've got to be honest, that is pretty nifty and saves you a ton of time and effort. Is it a unique feature? To be honest, I have no idea. I've never seen it in any other tool, but however, it might be at this. So let me know in the comment section if you've seen something like this in other builders or Gutenberg kind of tools, those kinds of things. But I like it. I think it's really cool. You can as well, if you want to, go ahead and import an entire page. So if you've got multiple pieces in a page design, you want to install all of that into the page you're currently working on, you can just use the option to import the entire page. So if you have multiple pieces, all of it comes in. Again, pretty cool and very, very easy to do. Let's save this page. Let's come back out of this. Let's go back out into our dashboard. And from there, we're going to come down into Breakdance. And we're going to come into the Set-in section. Let's go over now into Design Library, and inside there you can see we've got some options. We can set this entire site to a design set. So we can check that, and that will convert all the different sections inside this design into a full design set, at which point you could then share that with people, you know, all those kinds of things. The other thing that's cool is once you've done that, you can see that gives us a link. So if we just copy that link from there, you can go ahead on any other website that's using Breakdance. When you set up any of your sites to have a design set and you've checked that option, you can then simply come back into here, paste in that link. As you can see, there's the link to this particular site. And all of those template files will be available on that site. So for example, if we set it up on this site, then I created a totally blank site and I want to pull in the header, the footer and various other things. I could set the first site up as a design set paste the custom design set link into the second site, the blank site, and then all those options will be available inside the design library that we've just been taking a look at. I mean, come on, that is pretty cool. That's kind of giving you cloud access to design templates, and you could easily set up one site that is just for all of your templates and then pull in what you want into any other site you want to link it to. Or if you want to share it with other people, make it globally shareable, whatever you kind of want. All you need is that link. Now, let me just wrap this up by saying I'm not telling you to go out and buy Breakdance, even though you can't at the moment. But when it is available, and you may be seeing this further on down the line. I just want to show you some of the things that I think are relatively innovative about what they're doing with Breakdance. Whether I like the concept of the builder itself or the company or anything else is irrelevant. These are innovative ways of working. But as always, let me know your thoughts down below. Have you tested this out for yourself? Would this make you want to go and have a look while you can download the full unfiltered beta version of this and you can test it out and play about with it to your heart's content? Are you an oxygen user that's kind of pissed at the fact that this is moving relatively fast since it's been launched in comparison to oxygen? Again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But as always, all the applicable links are down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care.